Hey YouTube, it's Caleb with Olympus Reptiles. And before we get on today's subject, there is something I have to do and kind of go back towards because, again, being on social media, it gets a little bit tricky, right? I have a pre-thought of what I want to say, and then as soon as that camera comes on because I'm not used to it, it's like a deer in the headlight, and I forget everything I wanted to say. And on these turtles, real quick, I did want to say um, there was an issue with the shipping, and they said that they tried to deliver and couldn't, and some sort of issue happened. They didn't deliver because I was sitting at the door waiting. And uh, I would like to thank Christopher Hayden. Uh, he works with me at K-State. He also works for UPS. I called him up panicking because critically endangered turtles. And uh, he lined it all up, got the driver back, and actually delivered the animals. And uh, so I definitely appreciate that. I told him I'd shout him out because I really appreciate it because I was stressing this whole time for this. And I appreciate that. But on today's video, we're going to talk about um, moving females over to new racks, right? So obviously we have this brand new 30 stack, um, and it's fabulous. I love it. Um, it's got all kinds of cool features we'll talk about as well. And why we moved some females from here over here instead of just waited to upgrade females that were growing up, right? So on that, we got these, we... I wasn't around, at, well, I was around, but not here at the time. You guys got these about six years ago. I looked back on YouTube, started getting some of these about six years ago. Over time, because there are, these racks are powered by wires and things like that, that tubs can rub on, things like that, issues can happen, and you can start fires. I actually had something like that happen to one of my racks a long, long time ago. Um, bought a secondhand rack, and I didn't really check the wires, I just kind of hodgepodge it together and call it a day, right? So moving females does one of two things. One, we moved all females who laid eggs except for like two, but we really just moved them over to move them over. But everyone who had laid eggs got moved over until this was full. Part of that is because when they lay eggs, you wanna clean that tub and make sure that all that egg smell is out. You wanna wash them down, make sure everything's good. Because once, if they still have that egg scent, they're going to lay on them like they're laying on eggs. And then they're not going to eat. And then you're not getting them back on food fast enough. Could run into some health issues. Lots of big issues. So a whole brand new tub gets them going. And I'll be honest, you know, a whole new rack. I can tell you that some females who didn't get a whole new rack or tub or whatever, compared to the females here, do not eat the same. There are times where I will hear a snake grab onto a rat so hard that it shakes this rack. Compared to this one, you hear it sometimes, but not nearly as much as you do as this rack. So that is important too, to remember, is when it comes to breeding, you wanna really clean out that tub, clean out that snake, throw that whole litter away, start fresh, get them a fresh tub, fresh setup. They're gonna feel good, and they're gonna hopefully get back on food for you. The other important reason, is kind of what I touched on when we first started, is uh, rack fires. Right? We've had a, a Patreon member happen to them within the last month, I believe it's been. Might have been a little bit longer. Um, I've had it happen. I know a few others who've had some tub malfunctions and, and it didn't necessarily start a fire, but the rack just completely quit on them. So it's always good that when you pull out an egg, or an egg, pull out a tub, like we pulled out this girl here, who is probably gonna wanna bite me because she's a little feisty. Now she laid a clutch, so we moved her over. When I moved her over, let's say it was from this tub. It wasn't, I don't remember exactly which one it is, but I know it wasn't this one. It actually might've been this one, right? We pull out that tub, stick her in this fresh clean tub. And then while I'm out, while I have this out, just look at all the wires make sure there's no fraying, make sure everything's contacted correctly, throw some electrical tape on it if I need it, make sure it's heating properly. You know, so for, most part, for the most part, it's pretty easy to see when a rack isn't heating properly. When you have a whole row, let's say this whole row didn't eat, that tells me something's off. Because if it's a whole row in a row, you know, instead of like one here, one there, one there, and sporadic, that's different. But if I have a whole, I guess this would be a column, not a row, huh? A whole column doesn't eat, then you're going to run into, then you know, hey, something's not heating properly, something's probably wrong. That's not always the case because come breeding season for us, we'll have rows or rows this way, not eat at all. And then so as it goes down, it looks like that whole column hasn't eaten. So take that into consideration, but it's always best if you have something like this, not eating, 
to check to make sure it heats running properly. So while we have them out in our moving different tubs, it's much easier on us to just, while we're at it, just check to make sure everything's running right, make sure all the wires are working right, making sure everything looks nice. Because it would be absolutely devastating for anyone any size. I don't want it to sound like our, if something happened here, it'd be more catastrophic than anyone else or yada, yada, yada. Devastating for anyone. But when you have a collection this size, as compared to like when I first had it, I think I had 10 to 12 snakes. That was devastating. It really was a kick to the nuts. But I could start over and not feel like I have so much more work to put back in. Whereas a, something this size, if you had something wipe out the entire collection, I mean, Matt's, I mean, Matt have had that conversation. Matt's pretty much felt like, and I guess, if, if things have changed, Matt, and if you're watching this, I do apologize for quoting you if I'm misquoting you. But that's pretty much it. Like, he's at the point in, in life where he doesn't really want to start over from one snake to get back up to the however many we have, you know, almost 200. And so it's really important to sometimes just kind of get the whole kit and caboodle and, and splurge on the racks because you want them to last. You want them, I mean, six years is a pretty good run for for these and they're still working great so i'm not saying that these are being kicked out right they're not being voted off the island they still work great but six years is a really good run to not really have as many issues so that's why it's really really important that you're checking that because the longer you these are like honda civics right honda civics kind of a meh car but it's cheap to fix and if you work on it man they're easy to work on and they'll last forever same with these racks if you're just maintaining them and making sure they're good to go gonna last you a while same with this rack this rack actually is gonna have probably last longer than this one because it's got less pieces to break and it'll it'll be around forever right and then even better is this got a table that I can set something that I'm working on say I'm working on this bell here she's gonna get a tub cleaning this week and I can set it here work I don't have to come all the way over here she's a little pretty bell that laid for us and uh you know so sometimes it's okay to splurge on racks and i sometimes i mean all the time right because they're gonna last you don't want having technical issues mid breeding season you don't want to have a rack fire that wipes out all your collection and so it's really important to make sure especially when you're running heat tape or heat pads or whatever you're running because i've seen some people there's nothing wrong with this in the beginning right as long as you know what you're doing i've seen some people Jerry rig a bunch of uh, reptile heat mats together and make their own rack and good on you if you can do it. I don't trust myself to do it. That's why I buy professionally done ones. Um, and I recommend that more than anything. If you know what you're doing, it's fine. But if you don't, you could really, really fuck something up that really, really ends badly, not just for your animals, but your house or whatever, what have you. So moral of the story, Make sure you're checking up the wires. Make sure you're checking to make sure everything's heating correctly because you want your animals to be properly heated so they're eating, growing, producing, all that good stuff. And swap out tubs so that way you can keep up to date and just check like, you know, this whole row we emptied except for one. So now I can go through and really, if I had to, just rewire everything I need to. Move this rack over, rewire. Move those guys over here, rewire, so on and so forth. It's much easier when you have a second rack that you can just swap tubs completely in completely different racks. Other than that, Curtis, do you have any questions? Nope. Nope. All right, guys, we're going to slide on to Patreon. We'll catch you next time.